Welcome everyone. I am Grace Rue, Associate Director of the USC East Asian Studies Center, and we are very grateful to have you join us today for the latest offering in the EASC Race Solidarity Trans-Pacific Conversation Series. The series has provided important and timely discussions this past academic year in the context of the current racial reckoning at USC and beyond. And we have this conversation within a global context. The series seeks to provide a platform to engage with a host of social and cultural issues related to race and racism on both sides of the Pacific. Our aim is to help broaden and deepen the current discussion on race with global and historical perspectives drawing in particular on the expertise and connections of our affiliated faculty and graduate students who have worked on these topics within diverse East Asian contexts and among Asian diasporic communities. Um, I would like to thank professors Valina Hasu Houston and Rena Heinrich for organizing this wonderful event today entitled The Asian and Black Question Up Close in Drama, Plays That Organically Reckon Across the Divide. I would also like to thank the professional ensemble of actors and I myself am very much looking forward to this event. I will briefly introduce both professors who will then introduce the cast and the performance today. Um, Valina Hasu Houston is honored by the Kennedy Center, Smithsonian Institute, Rockefeller Foundation, Japan Foundation, Wallace Foundation, Doris Duke Charitable Foundation, Theater Communications Group and others. She founded graduate playwriting studies at the USC School of Dramatic Arts, where she is distinguished professor, director of the MFA Dramatic Writing and head of undergraduate playwriting, as well as being a resident playwright. She also teaches for the USC Jimmy Iovine Andre Young Academy and is an associated faculty member of the USC Shinso Ito Center for Japanese Religions and Cultures, as well as affiliated faculty with American Studies Ethnicity and the East Asian Studies Center at USC. Uh, Rina Heinrich is an assistant professor of theater practice and critical studies in the School of Cinematic uh, School of Dramatic Arts at USC. Uh, she is theater director and actor. She has been directing and performing professionally for over 20 years. And as a scholar, her teaching and areas of expertise include race, representation, and gender in performance, Asian and Asian American drama, performance studies, and postcolonial theater. She's also a, an affiliate of the USC East Asian Studies Center. Thank you both of our distinguished faculty. And without further ado, please take it away. Great. Um, I want to just thank our audience. Can we just um, visually, I know we're not on cameras with audience, but I just want to invite everybody to send love and energy. Feel free to give it to us in the chat. Um, if you're in our audience today, thank you so much. Uh, I'm Allison Dela Cruz. I've been reading your stage directions. Uh, and I also have the honor of um, helping to lead this uh, post reading Q&A. Uh, so I just want to again say thank you to our full company of actors, Zin Zhang, Natsuko Ohama, AK uh, Murtada, Siobhan St. Clair, Nona Johnson and Jeff Rebus. We wanna give them a big round um, of applause and say thank you. I wanna um, invite folks, if you're watching, feel free to send us some um, questions in the chat. And as we transition into this chat, I wanna invite our playwright, Valina Hasa Houston, for you to turn on your camera and your sound. And I would love to invite our director, Rena Heinrich as well, to go ahead and turn on your camera and your sound. Um, welcome to both of you. Yay, applause. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yes, uh, thank you, Valina, for another uh, powerful installment of your work at this intersection of identity um, and a place that I think sometimes not everybody sees, but I certainly know for many of us in the Asian American theater community and broader BIPOC community, um, you have been a voice for a lot of us for many, many years. And I just want to say thank you. and. Um, I wonder if I can start with you first, because this particular series is about looking at intersections between uh, Asian and Black experiences, in, specifically in theater. But in this moment that we find ourselves in this series of moments we've been in over this last year, um, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about, do you feel like because we're in a new kind of racial reckoning moment or this current racial reckoning moment, seeing it as part of a continuum of moments, 
does this, does the writing feel different to you now? Does it, does it change how you approach your writing and your craft? Uh, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about that. And then Rena, also as a director, does this moment change? Because I know both of you in our collaborations over these last 20 years, seeing both of your work, you are already working in diverse places, trying to bring voices to the forefront. So, um, sure. so talk about that. Well, first of all, I just want to thank the audience and the artists because you know we we can't make these kinds of sites and spaces happen without uh, being there for each other. Others, so thank you. But um, I have to say that the, this moment of racial reckoning is really quite fascinating to me. But uh, at the same time, I know that uh, throughout my literary career, I've always written about intersections between cultures because that is the experience of my family, uh, my, my immediate family, as well as my extended family. So that's the natural world. And even as I was listening to the reading, I was thinking, when I was in the household, there were, you know, Asian cultures, Black cultures, you know, uh, Latinx cultures, all different kinds of cultures in the house, but I never thought of them as distinct or discrete color groups. I just thought of them as people, you know, who I loved. And when I think about the theater, I think, well, I can think of maybe three plays that look at Asian culture intersected with uh, BIPOC, another BIPOC culture, and that would be Yohen by Philip Kahn Gotanda, Kimchi and Chitlins by Elizabeth Wong, and Konhuto by uh, Oliver Mayer, which, which is a blend of, of Japanese American and Mexican American cultures. Because usually when I see theater, it tells stories about uh, Asian culture intersecting with white culture. Mm -hmm. And of course, I'm not judging that because the reality is that may be that person's expression. But I know mine has been centered in this. And I guess in this moment of racial reckoning, it makes it interesting because a lot of people are thinking about it in ways that maybe they haven't before. Thank you. Um, uh, Rena, I want to invite you to uh, chime in as well. Have you know? Is there a change that you're noticing in this moment? Is this just extend also for you work you're already doing? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I was in class earlier today, and we were talking about Buteau, and one of my students said how much the work really resonated with her specifically in this moment, and I thought, wow, how interesting! Because three years ago, that wouldn't have been the conversation. Right, and this exploration of, um, I think, the sort of shadows of society, these dark moments, you know, it, it has swung back to that and really causing us to do some soul searching. And certainly, because I worked on this play, um, gosh, a little over a year ago. And, and my own sensibility was different. Even though I had been working in these spaces and engaging in intercultural conversations uh, in theater, my, my own sense and my own approach to the work now um, shifted. And that is absolutely, I think, as a result of the moment we're in. You know, it's interesting, Belina, because just listening to you it, talking about conversations that we see on stage that are, you know, between Asian, Asian American, or specifically Japanese, Japanese American culture and, and white culture. Um, and I think that's true. And I'm just reflecting because in your work specifically, that that is um, those conversations between different cultures, that's that's much more sort of fluid and elastic but yet oftentimes when I see your work cast, it gets defaulted to uh, Japanese, Japanese American and a white conversation. And that's not necessarily how that work is written. And I think it's interesting because again, it, it really talks to uh, what's our sensibility? What is the default uh, in the theater community? How does that reflect um, the sort of default? Uh, that we have in the in the uh, culture at large and society at large, um, and so I, I really I really appreciated you saying that and this idea that that is shifting because people are really forced to look at perhaps what the default has been. So, you know, and Allison, your question makes me realize that with this play, setting the table is an interesting example. 
because uh, the idea for the play originally came from a woman I grew up with, uh, not my mother, but another Japanese immigrant who uh, immigrated into a family where she was left with two white stepchildren. And so when I first began to explore the story, I wanted to explore it from Yoshie's perspective. She's one of the women the play is dedicated to. Uh, but then I realized that that for me it was much more interesting to pull it into uh, an Asian immigrant's world that intersected with blackness. And uh, it, that impulse came from two things. One is um, that uh, I didn't really care because it was a story I wanted to tell. So I wanted to explore it, you know, from that perspective. But uh, also I felt freer to do so because when I read a headline, when um, Kamala Harris became vice president, I read a headline in a major media outlet that said Asian and black, you know, and I, and I, and it was a question mark. Right. And I thought, and for my life, it's been Asian and black period. You know? So, so for me, I thought, well, maybe finally the world gets that there are actually a lot of Asian and black unions around the globe <laughs> that produce people like Kamala Harris and myself and, uh, uh, you know, many other people. So, uh, so I think that it, it did, the moment allowed things to open up. I don't know why the moment came now and not when Breonna Taylor was killed or when my friend Raymond Jackson was killed 25 years, some years ago, but it, at least it's here. And so I'm hoping that we can have more open conversations and see more plays like the ones I suggested because I think that that's a, there, there's a whole new, there's a whole, not a new world, but there's a world out there of Asian intersections with different BIPOC cultures that is fascinating mm -hmm. and storytelling. Mm -hmm. and, and I would like connect that in a way, I really appreciate having this conversation as we think about, you know, as Asian American, and I'll just acknowledge, like as an Asian American who is mixed with white, um, that that is often something I have to be an ally and aware about when I'm in mixed race space and particularly in mixed race Asian and Pacific Islander space because there's so, like you're saying, there's so much history in our different Asian diaspora groups uh, there are different moments where there have been mixes of folks. I think about uh, the Black soldiers who came to the Philippines during the Philippine-American War, who a, a whole set of them decided to leave the U.S. Army because they connected the dots between what was happening. So, so I know that there are these moments where U.S. military connection and intervention is part of folks' story, but also this idea that there are Afro-Asians all over the globe and not just in Asia, but I think about the way diaspora goes into the Caribbean and how and into South America. And so so I just want to hold that space that for our audience who may who may be coming to this as if it's a brand new thing, what I heard you say, Valina, is this is your family, this is not a new thing. And I think as we continue to uncover uh, the study of our diasporic communities, what are we hiding? What are we missing? How do we not um, how do we not erase actually important connections between um, Black and Asian communities, not just through people, but also through these places where people have lived near each other. Like locally in Los Angeles, Little Tokyo has a history around World War II of Black and Asian communities connecting and Black community holding space when, when Japanese Americans had to go to incarceration camps. So I just kind of want to hold that uh, for folks. I wonder, can we talk, Belina, a little bit, you know, um, as somebody who's worked on some pre some of your previous productions, I'm feeling really honored to have been a part of the company that, uh, an AD on calligraphy, uh, obviously your first, your play T, and then T with music, shouts out to some of our friends who are watching who are connected to that. Setting the table is in a similar theme world, but I wonder, how is this a different kind of story for you? Right. Um, mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I would say that that uh, even if the colors are Asian and black, um, the stories for me are always different, right? And I think that that's part of the goal in a way to sort of normalize the Asian and black intersection so that you can just tell a story without people saying, oh, it's an Asian and black story. But instead of, oh, it's a story, let me see what this particular story is about. And so setting the table deals with a Japanese immigrant, you know, trying to raise two black American stepchildren Whereas a play like T, you know, there's just one Japanese woman who is one fifth of a community who happens to be married to a black American man and that plays into the interactions with the other women. So they're all different stories. Um, and I think that that's important. What's interesting for me though, is I feel that um, 
the Black American world could never say, well, these aren't quite Black stories. And the Asian American world could never say, well, these really aren't quite Asian stories. And then in the mixed race Asian community, it was, you know, everything was Asian and white. And sometimes those of us who, who were Asian and Black felt that we were some sort of others other within the Hapa community. So I really, I just been telling stories. It's just that the colors may be different. And, and I don't think that that's something that I need to apologize for. If anything, I'm just trying to, you know, explore some, uh, not again, I'm going to say new, but no, just go into a territory where uh, people haven't gone before. And I think that that's, you know, important for us as human beings. Thank you. Um, I want to acknowledge that we had told the cast that we didn't necessarily want to welcome them back, but I do want to say out loud that they might make a final little bow appearance shortly, so company stand by. Mm -hmm. um, Rina, I wonder if you could talk about, you know, in this process of preparing for this reading, certainly there was a question in the Q&A, where did we find this amazing company of actors, so if you could address that question. But also if you could just talk a little bit about what your approach has been, knowing that we had a short rehearsal period, Valina's in development with this work you know, how do you kind of crunch in as a director um, to offer opportunity to continue to develop this play and this conversation? Mm. Mm. Thank you for that. Um, the, the script has been in development um, for some time. As I said, I worked on it previously and then it's also been workshopped um, with the Road Theater and Playwrights Arena here in town. Um, and as, as the play, uh, moves along, it, it picks up more and more folks. Um, and so many of the actors um, had worked on other iterations of the um, play before. Um, and then um, one actor in particular, A.K. Murtada, um, came to us this, this time around and we're so grateful to have him. Um, my approach, I'm a dramaturg as well as a director. Um, and so my approach is, you know, I ask questions in terms of uh, what makes sense within the world of the play. Um, and just to keep asking these kinds of questions, you know, um, if, if he went to Japan for this period of time, um, logistically, you know, where are the children? Why did they not, were they not able to come? Those kinds of questions to try to um, close those gaps for the audience um, and to kind of be a guardian of the audience. I mean, that's certainly one of the um, uh, uh, aims or goals, objectives of my job. Um, and just to, to basically say to folks, you know, we can't ask all of the dramaturgical questions and, and dig as deep as we would like if we were in a longer process. Um, but certainly if you have questions along the way, please ask those and just to um, truncate the process as much as possible and to make all of the shifts internally within scenes clear so that there is um, a through line in terms of what individual character arcs are in telling this story, right? And that I think that's even more challenging because it's an excerpt. Um, and so to sort of lead us to a place where we hopefully want more and to find out what happens with these people. Um, so I hope, I hope that answered both of your questions, yeah. Yes, thank you. I'm also getting a note that the chat is disabled for attendees, but there's a Q&A box. So that's where I'm pulling info from. Um, and in this, on, you know, we're kind of in this last nine minutes, um, I'm just about to invite this company in. Um, but I guess I just want to ask Valina, as you continue to develop this piece, do you have a hope for, and maybe not just this piece, but as you think about kind of envisioning your hopes for, for theater and obviously, you know, the work you do, you do to develop new um, playwrights and new artists um, through uh, the School of Drama, um, Dramatic Arts, well, do I mean, the moment is going to change. Sorry, I, I just do you feel like we're in a change moment or do you feel like we're just in a oh, we're just going to hunker down kind of like we did post 92 riots in L.A. Hmm. Is it a real moment of opportunity for playwrights of diverse of, of diverse backgrounds to really achieve a, play, a place in theater? Well, I think that there's a moment now, but I don't think that these moments last. I mean, I, I, I have seen I mean, it, well, when it comes to groups of color in the United States, I feel that we have these kind of flashpoint moments and things open up 
and then uh, they tended to close again and get more narrow. So I, I hope it's the moment lasts a long time because I see a lot of, uh, you know, vibrant, uh, you know, writers of all different backgrounds, right? And certainly for me as a writer, I just keep writing because that's what I do. And, and I have, you know, before it was like, you know, you're not black enough, you're not Asian enough. <laughs> whatever, right? And now it's like, you're not young enough because now there's also ageism, which is the new, uh, 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 the new racism that I, that's, in, that's come into my life. And so I, I struggle with all those things, but I don't really think about them when I'm creating because I feel that the expression has to be there. And, um, you know, I just do what I do and I tell those stories and, and there are a lot of stories to be told. And I'm so glad that there's a lot of, uh, writers out there who come to my program, who don't come through the program, who, who are doing all kinds of interesting things and telling all kinds of stories. And I'm learning through their perspectives uh, and, the, and the parts of the world that they bring to me, the parts of the human composition. I think that that's fabulous. That's really provoking and uh, mm -hmm. awesome. I, I have a thought. Yes, I was gonna say, I'm gonna send the same question to you, Rena, and then actors, I'm gonna invite you to answer the same question. Are we at a... Are we at a singular flashpoint again? Is there a few, you think this is a good trajectory moment? So that's my invitation question. Actors, you can think about that. Rena, here you go. I, I would say that I, I've seen a shift uh, in the work that is coming out since 2000. And it seems to me that specifically in the American context, what a lot of playwrights of color are doing is, um, and, I, and I'm thinking specifically of mixed race writers as well, um, is questioning systems and really interrogating the system. And I'm seeing that more and more. And it seems that there's a shift from um, sort of questions about personal identity and more about pushing against the system, pushing against the way the system has um, perhaps contained or defined relationships and racial dynamics like we see in this play. Um, and so for me, it feels like that's going to push, push forward even more, specifically because of the moment that we're in. I, I imagine that that's what would happen. Now, certainly as Valina said, that it could be cyclical and that might shift again, um, but I, I, that's my sense and I have hope that that, will, that work will continue to grow. Can, may I just quickly say too that when you say that, Rena, it makes me think of plays of the 1960s, which pushed against the system. Ah, interesting. <laughs> mm -hmm. Which is cyclical. Yes, of course. Yeah, we're just cyclical. Yes, exactly. Mr. <laughs> must be pushing. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> I'm going to welcome in the um, so much work. actors who are still here. We had wanted to release some folks, but I know a couple of folks are still here. Um, and I want to say thank you all. Um, and um, just wonderful job again, great job. And a uh, question to you all, do you, where do you think we are in this moment of theater making? Are we gonna get to keep making stuff like this? Um. I'll start. Uh, I've, I've been part of a, a, a company that uh, we are the Latino Theater Company for over 30 years. And uh, we took over an 80,000 square foot building downtown LA. And our, our mission is to be a reflection of what this great city is and what it presents. So we've always been producing uh, people of color plays. The our hope, though, and our, and our dream is that people like you know Valina, who's got a voice that needs to be heard, become part of the American theater icon because they always still keep us in a separate box, versus you know, from from what everyone thinks Tennessee Williams, Shakespeare, all these days. Like so, you know, again in the American theater I, uh, lexicon, uh, more playwrights of color really need to be you know, uh, lift it up, lift it up and, and honor for, for their work. It's not just, you know, um, the white writers. Yeah. Yes, AK. Uh, I, I just want to agree with, with uh, Rena and, and with Valina. I, I think that many playwrights are continuing and artists, um, theater practitioners. Uh, even and film practitioners are are questioning the systems, and I think um, we need to continue to shape and change the dialogue. Um, you know, and I think that it's I th it, one 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 thing. Um, I'm honored to be 
a part of this um, study of the diasporic connections um, that that are are sharing space and and connecting. Um, but I I also think that we we have to challenge ourselves to to change the dialogue in a way. Um, too often we refer to each other in pejorative, oppressive phrases um, and definitions that are, are changed to, uh, chained to the uh, uh, hegemonic paradigm. And I, and I think that, that, you know, as we continue to, to love each other and love each other's culture, we'll, we'll find, you know, different words that mesh and, and, and define who we are loving each other, recognizing each other, seeing each other. And um, I think playwrights and screenwriters and artists are so uh, necessary because of that. So um, I say thank you uh, and appreciate, you know, just being a part of this for that. Thank you, Valina. Thank you, Rena. Um, thank you and respect. Thank you. In this last small set of minutes. I want to um, ask if any of the actors, um, Natsuko or Nona, Zine, where do you think we are? Um, I think that in terms of this moment, as far as shedding light on a lot of things in a way that maybe we haven't previously, that there's always, it's always have like been in conversation in several different spaces and definitely always been in conversation in a theater space is just becoming more accessible because of the state of the world right now being in this pandemic, doing something via Zoom and making it available pretty much to anyone. Like you can watch it on your phone. And I think that th this moment won't die anytime soon, m in large part due to that. And I feel like there's this desire and this need and this like very, very strong anticipation for when we're able to commune and and in in a space together and able to witness theater or witness art and in all its forms in person, that there's this anticipation for that and that the moment will, will only become more charged then. And so I feel like if anything, we're just keeping it alive and keeping this fresh and and and, and new ideas like alive and, and we're continuing to validate each other. I feel like that kind of bridging with what AK was saying, part of like look, seeing what that language is of us all loving each other is validating everyone's experience as, as thoroughly as possible. And I feel like that's something that, we're, that isn't gonna cease, especially with this readiness to sort of be together again. You know, may I say too that I, I think that in terms of racially, I, I think that it's not, I mean, I don't know what that moment's going to be like racially because I'm looking historically at how our country has handled those kinds of moments and I'm not so sure. But technologically speaking, I think that we've learned a lot in this moment in terms of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And I think that we'll find, we've discovered new ways of how to connect with each other. And I think many of those won't go away because we found that, that it allows, well, even like global connection you know i'm able to to uh to interact and work with with people in korea and japan and uh and algiers you know and different places and i think that that's that's wonderful i mean that's that's happening right now we have four different time zones represented right here in this in this cast so uh i was just gonna say that um uh, have, having had you know almost 50 years in the theater now i have mm -hmm. I, I, you know, you see these cycles that Valina is talking about, and I've been through so many of them. Uh, you know, it kind of like goes up and then it goes down, and everybody forgets, and then it comes. You, you know, we have these writers like Frank Chin and Momoko Iko, and this is the heritage. I think the good news is young people. I think mixed race, intelligent young people are kind of looking to the future and that is a very very important thing that's going to make a difference there there used to be funding for theater and playwrights and a lot of people got to hand up that way that was very helpful so i hope that we can get that going again for people but it's hard for me and i please young people get excited 
it's hard for me to get excited because you march and you <laughs> you go and do this and it's important I'll do it but I can't get all the, the fires are kind of tamped down now for me but I say go I, I think there's a lot of opportunity and it, it, it will go forward don't forget the past though there's a lot of talent mm -hmm. in the past kind of makes me think of it like a relay like what you just said in Oxico. yeah like I feel like everybody goes to those spells it's like I'm I'm tired but as soon as I'm tired, like someone's picked up the baton and mm -hmm. then get up and ready mm -hmm. again. So even then, it's like, it's okay. Be tired. And that's the other thing. I feel like that's something that everyone's validating more. Mm -hmm. Like, it's okay to be a little exhausted from that. <laughs> and you can't do it alone. No. You're, you are constantly passing on the baton. And you're also in that Sankofa sense looking back in order to, to move forward, you know, learning from from your ancestors learning from your own mistakes learning from the the pitfalls and continuing to to recharge and move forward thank you uh zine i want to offer you one last thought um i acknowledge you're in the taiwan time zone so we thank you for being and we've been in rehearsal for four hours so thank you for for staying up um yeah what do you think about this particular moment I I thought I've been working with uh, Valina in this play for uh, for a very long time. If I will say it feels <laughs> feels it's like continuing to this point, and I met new people. Um, Jeff is like an old friend, and uh, <laughs> I see <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> it's like an old friend of mine right now, and Natsuko and. Nona is um it's because of this play that I can get touch with these two women. I love them deeply. And then I feel like in my uh year of absence, I feel like I am walking away from what from where I supposed to be. Mm -hmm. I from where I was dreamed that where I want to stand and then this play this reading gave me such an opportunity to to reunite it with with people who so dearly to me and um, AK such a such a sexy man he's so hot uh, <laughs> that was yeah. like this cast is so great thank you and I I have I'm so grateful to be here and um, for for my feeling to 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 this play i know it it's gonna go further it's gonna go so big and um i hope that i'm lucky enough to stay to 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 stick with every one of you rena mm -hmm. is so great she's so talented she reminds me of a female version of Gorshavsky. oh my god uh, <laughs> and, um, uh, alice is yeah. so great i met her before and I suddenly remembered she used to have a different color, hair color, yes. And um, for being in Taiwan, I saw for the first half year, I, I struggled to stick with acting. Yeah. I put myself in a spot where I will not um, work regularly. I would just go get part-time because I can uh, do theater work and um, I worked with two theater company, but then I got so tired. Mm. I felt that that that's not something that I want. So I stopped. That's so honest of myself. I stopped and became a worker. Yeah. I sell my my uh, labor. No, <laughs> the word the people. Yes. I sell myself like a worker. Oh my God. And I believe this play, because there's lines, there's uh, scenes, there's moments in this play that I feel so much resonant mm -hmm. with it. For example, the line, I want to come to the America and to make my dreams come true. Oh my God. I see every Asian little ladies want to do that too. And I say, I want to go to the graduate school. Oh. <laughs> That was like something that hit me in the heart. 
Thank you for that. And I, and I just want to say there's never enough time in these kinds of conversations. And I, and I really want to say thank you. There's a couple of questions in the Q&A that we didn't quite get to, but I do want to say out loud there was a request. I just want to say Diego as played by Jeff Rivas, Misao as played by Natsuko Ohamla, Nathaniel as played by A.K. Murtata, uh, Willa Jean as played by Nona Johnson, and Yoshimi as played by Zin Zhang. I want to give you all uh, lots of love. Um, there was a question in the chat about the connection of gardens and garden cultures. I just want to button and say, yes, that's something Rena as the director connected to and invited people to think about connections in Black community and culture through Alice Walker, Dreams of My Mother's Garden, mm -hmm. as well as gardening uh, culture and connection in Japanese and Asian spaces. I would even say in Latinx communities, uh, welcoming the diversity of Diego as a Mexican-American in Kansas. Yeah. What does it mean to envision diversity and multi intersectionality in our theater work uh, with these great actors? So I, I just want to say thank you to, to you all. I invite our audience to continue to connect, stay connected to the, uh, the USC East Asian Studies Center. And as we wrap today, I just want to uh, welcome back uh, Grace Yu from the USC East Asian Studies Center to close us out. Um, thank you all so much for being in this combo with us and exploring this reading. And thank you, Valina, for this work, Rena, for this work, and Amazing Actor Company. Thank you. Thank and thank you, you Alison Dela Cruz, uh, yes. theater maker extraordinaire, yes. uh, production manager, actress, stage directions, and then an amazing facilitator. So thank you so much. Thank you. She's been brilliant, everybody. And, and she's a wonderful dramaturg, too. So. Yes. Thank you. Everyone, this was absolutely amazing. And uh, I love this idea of the struggle as a relay, passing the baton to the next generation. Um, you know, uh, I have to say, I was so impressed that with all the actors, that they were incredible uh, to do this on Zoom. I, I, I just couldn't envision it actually. I was like, how is this gonna turn out? So I am so impressed with how the production went. And um, I just want to say on behalf of the East Asian Studies Center, thank you, Valina, Rena, Allison, all the actors. We're gonna put all the actors and Allison's name on our website too. So everyone can have, uh, see them and know who they are. Uh, they deserve all the recognition and um, success. And thank you again, everyone. Thank Good you. night.